Hi everyone and thank you for joining me for this video, which is going to be a photo flick through from the highlights of our trip to Universal Studios in November 2019. This video is going to focus on Islands of Adventure. If you happen to miss the original Universal Studios section for, of these videos, I'll link it up in the information cards now. I have no photos to show you of the way in, which is called Port of Entry and we're turning straight left into the Marvel superhero area. As well as the comic book themed buildings and signs, you'll also have the chance to interact with characters from the Marvel Universe. And through the legs of the Incredible Hulk roller coaster, we can see the Jurassic Park Discovery Center, and we can also see the Hogwarts Castle. While we did still have a bit of a browse around, essentially Toon Lagoon, Skull Island, and Jurassic Park were walkways for us to get to the Wizarding World which we're going to skip for now and head around to the Lost Continent. This statue is part of the Mythos restaurant, which is now on my list of experiences to have the next time we go to Universal. There's also a little track between some boulders that heads down behind the Mythos restaurant along the waterfront. And as you cross a little bridge, these fish perfectly track your movements. This track also gives you some great vantage points for the lands on the other side of the lake, including Marvel, Jurassic Park, and a little peek of the Wizarding World. Leaving Lost Continent and we find our way into Zeus Landing. As well as the chance to see and meet some fun characters, Zeus Landing is full of fun and kooky architecture, design and decorations, especially around Christmas. When you continue heading in this direction, it leads you back to Port of Entry and the way out. So now we're going to double back to Wizarding World Hogsmeade and starting with Hogsmeade Station. Now this is actually the view that you get while you're waiting for the train to head back over to London. Looking back at Hogsmeade Station, and now looking forward to the entry of Hogsmeade. If you've already seen my Universal Studios merchandise show and tell, you will know that I took home a pin of this fantastic sign that hangs in the archway. Just inside the entry to your right, is another replica of the Hogsmeade station, with a stationary engine of the Hogwarts Express, which is absolutely perfect for taking photos with. And you'll often find a train conductor here, helping customers and posing for photos. And unfortunately, I did not catch this young man's name, but I would really like to thank him, both for being a fantastic train conductor, and also for being the only character that I got to pose with that didn't make me feel like Hagrid's great-granddaughter. And I'll show you what I mean up the other end of the main street a little later. And into the shopping district of Hogsmeade. And the first shop that we're able to go into is Honey Jukes. This day getting a non-glary photo through the windows was a little challenging, but I absolutely love the way they've displayed these chocolate frog boxes. and their holiday wreaths and garlands are decorated with little sugar balls. This is another shop that I absolutely love looking around and seeing all the details, and not just because it's full of absolutely delicious treats. So this was my picture of the Birdie Bots advertising, as well as some of the lollies and treats decorating in jars, with an accidental sneaky pic of mum taking a photo. And this was her focus, what was on the top of the cabinetry. And of course we have to check out the stuff that's actually edible. This is the cold case right near the registers. The first thing we picked up was a cauldron cake, which I love grabbing every time because you actually get to keep the silicon baking cauldron. And the other thing we picked up out of the fresh window was this pumpkin cake. The thing that really surprised me though is the fact that while it looks like a pumpkin, this is actually one of the best orange flavoured cakes I have ever eaten. To eat our mock pumpkin orange cake, we were sitting in some seats under the Owlery, which is one of my favourite buildings in Hogsmeade, and is also actually a cuckoo clock, and provides what is essentially the only shade available in Hogsmeade that isn't within a shop or a ride. Under here is also one of the entrances to Dervish and Bangs. Once inside, the store has a few compartments which makes it a bit of a one-stop shop and also features some fantastic theming, especially around the roof line. This area also includes their outpost shop 
and on the corner is a branch of olivanders. And jumping across a little sidewalk is Spintwitch's sporting needs, which I believe is just a facade, but boasts some fantastic theming as well. Jumping back down the street to the three broomsticks for lunch, and mum picked up the shepherd's pie while I got the beef pasties. And I got mine with the onion potatoes and fresh corn. And we both grabbed a hot butter beer. Now making our way back up the street on the left hand side looking at the facades, we have the windows and sign for dogweed and deathcap. And for some reason I love that they have the same sort of cut out wrought iron signs for the public conveniences or toilets. And we have glad rags featuring Hermione's Yule Ball gown and Scriven shafts right next door, so this would have been Hermione's one-stop shop. And just to the right, at the top of the building, you can see the Hogsmeade branch of the Wizarding Wireless Network. And coming out of the Hogsmeade Shopping District, we find this really cool sign, which is pretty close to the stage, where they do the Frog Choir performance, and also the Triwizard Spirit Rally display. And generally at the end of every performance, you have just a couple of minutes where you're able to line up to have your photo taken with the performers. This is also the photo I alluded to earlier, which demonstrates the problem I have sometimes when posing with characters, in that I look like I'm either one eighth or one quarter giant, but I just chuckle and stand a little taller. And making it to the open space in front of the stage is the first proper unobstructed view you're going to have of the Hogwarts castle. And in this case, hidden under the castle, is the Dark Ride Forbidden Journey. Across from the initial entry into Forbidden Journey is Flight of the Hippogriff, the kind of kiddie coaster. A little further up the slope and looking back towards Hogsmeade, you see the back of the winged boars. Heading to the top of the slope and you find Filch's Emporium under the Hogwarts Castle, which is the let out shop for Forbidden Journey. And make sure you look up as you come out of the shop so that you get to see this interesting perspective on the Hogwarts castle. Heading all the way back to the start for the photos we took after the sun was setting. As I mentioned in the previous Universal video, this is my favourite time to take photos as the lights come on and you can still see some extra details from the residual light. It's also just generally one of my favourite times to be in the parks. From just here in front of the Owlery is our first experience with the Hogwarts light show. And I just love the way the beams of light in this shot are playing up behind the Owlery, Hogsmeade and Hogwarts in the distance. And naturally for the time of year we were here, the Hogwarts projection show was Christmas themed. For our first viewing of this show, and it was not too long after dark, so the crowds were thick enough that we didn't really have a choice on where we got to stay. We were pretty much in the junction between the Hogsmeade Main Street and the bridge across to Jurassic Park. And I love that even just in this series of photos, you can see the motion of what they were doing on the projections. And I haven't counted, but there's at least a half a dozen different themed sequences. And I'm pretty sure this brightly coloured offering was Weasley's Wizard Weezers themed. This second viewing on the next night, we did a lot closer to the time the park closed and this could have even been the last run for the night. By this point for us, the crowd levels were a lot lower and the staff were having to do a lot less crowd control. So without really any planning or too much trouble, we were able to get ourselves a really nice spot on the bridge leading in from Jurassic Park. And this is still my favorite time and actually my favorite thing to do in the parks, just slowly leaving and holding on for dear life to that last bit of experience. I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. What is something you're really looking forward to doing once your restrictions and budgets allow it again? Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.